Hey guys, this is John with Performance Plus Tennis. Take a look at this photo of Roger Federer's forehand contact and ask yourself if this is the ideal contact for you. Today's lesson is going to be all about finding the ideal contact and why this may or may not be the ideal contact for most tennis players. So we all know Roger Federer has an amazing forehand, one of the best forehands in history. But there are things about his forehand that would be very difficult for most players to duplicate. And one thing in particular is this contact point that we see in this image. And his contact point, even though he has a continental grip, very classic continental grip, his contact point is further in front than I would say any player in history with that grip. Very unusual to have the, the contact point that far in front. The reason why he's able to do that is he holds his lag so long. He's lagging, 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 lagging. And then at the last moment, the racket catches up and comes to contact. And that is a very difficult skill to master. So I think this is a very difficult contact point for most players to play. And it really surprises me that he's able to effectively do this. Um, it's a different technique than he had earlier in his career as well, where his forehand was more of a, a classic forehand and where now this contact point is well, well out in front. So of course we know Roger's got a great forehand, but it would be so difficult for the average player to make contact that far in front because you'd really have to hold that lag, hold that lag, hold that lag, and then catch up into that area. The advantage of this for most of us isn't really there, okay? It's very, very difficult. And, and really for most of us, what I'm gonna really strongly encourage is that you really you know, play the contact in the range where you have power and control, particularly from your shoulder. So do you do anything in life out here? Do you reach for doors, shake hands, work on your computer, drive your car? You really can't use this muscle. You can't use this muscle to drive through the shot. He's beyond the point where the shoulder can actually drive through the ball. Um, but he replaces it with this tremendous lag and catch up that works for him. But pretty difficult for an average player to, to actually duplicate that. So where is the ideal contact point? How do we find it? And how do we know that that is the ideal contact point? Well, we wanna be in a natural range of motion. It's where we rotate into the forehand. We know we're trying to make a rotation with the core and that is the muscle behind the swing. That is the weight behind the swing. And then we wanna come into contact and when we come into contact, we wanna feel like we can jab through the ball with our shoulder. We wanna be able to advance the racket using the big muscle. And if we're too far out in front, then you're gonna be in a stalled position. And the only way you could have power out here is if you've really held the lag, held the lag, held the lag, and then accelerate at the end, which is, again, so difficult to do. So how do you find the ideal contact point? Would well, just simply be able to think, well, where do I put my arm? Where's my arm go when I'm shaking hands or when I'm reaching for a door or I'm doing things I do every single day in a range where I have balance and I have power and control? And that will help you find that contact point. So from a side view, you can see that it's out away in, in front of me, but it's very much in control here from the shoulder where I can advance through, advance through the ball using the big muscle, okay? And I'm, I've got excellent balance, I've got excellent control, and I can utilize the shoulder, okay, which is so critical. And you see player after player being in this position as they make contact, okay? And even in the early days, you'd see Federer more in this position than you would see him in this very exaggerated straight arm position. From a front view, the contact point on the forehand should be out and away, a comfortable distance, so you've got nice extension. Look at the distance between my elbow and my rib cage. Really, that's about almost eight inches, okay? Just about eight inches of nice, comfortable extension. It's there where I can make a nice drive through the ball using the power of the shoulder to drive out and around. So that's where we wanna be from a front view and from a side view, we want to be here. So it's almost out on a 45 degree angle from the direction I'm actually playing. So from this position here, I'm playing forward, but my contact point is out on a 45 degree angle, okay? So the key here is to learn how to coordinate and use your core and transfer the energy of your core into the swing. And if the contact point is too far on the front, I think you diminish the ability to do that for most of us, of course. And if you're late and then you can't use your core, then obviously that's gonna weaken you as well. So that's the ideal place to make contact for most of us for the medium height forehand, okay? Make sure you're comfortable, you're balanced, and you feel natural, 
as you make that contact on the forehand. So in summary, the big takeaway from today is really don't try to duplicate the contact point that Roger Federer has. It is uniquely his own. Very unusual to be that far in front on the contact point. And instead, try to find your natural range where you feel comfortable and powerful coming in to making the contact point on your forehand. And that's gonna help out quite a bit. We have a link down below where you can actually look at Roger Federer's forehand in match play from earlier days and you can see his forehand was much more conventional in many ways. It was, to me, it was a better forehand overall. I think it's, it's a forehand that was easier and more consistent overall, didn't get out of tune as easily, not as many miss hits perhaps. Um, and it was obviously a very, very effective forehand. But for some reason, midstream in his career, he made some changes to it where he changed the grip to more of an Eastern grip and then he created this extreme lag movement where he comes in as flat and then it comes in and lags all the way and then catches up, which has been really interesting. Um, interesting change, interesting transition in his career. But take a look at that video. And I think that'll help you out quite a bit for what we're trying to duplicate with our forehands. Thanks so much for watching today's lesson and I hope these ideas and concepts will help you improve your forehand. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And also please click on the link in the description down below to get access to my free mini course on the five key elements you need to master to achieve your full potential on your forehand. Please leave your comments down below. Let us know what you'd like to see here on the channel. Stay tuned, we've got a lot more in store and we'll see you in the next lesson.